Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. Today we're on lesson 21 and we're going to talk about simple linear regression using PROC REG and SAS. We're going to go over the assumptions of linear regression in another video as well as multiple linear regression in another video, but this is going to lay the groundwork for our first simple model in SAS. So some objectives that we're going to cover today, we're going to define what simple linear regression is and talk about the differences between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression. We're going to talk about that line of best fit that I'm sure a lot of you have seen in some of your future or previous math classes. We're going to just briefly state the assumptions, but we're going to have a whole nother tutorial on how to check for these assumptions. And we're going to do an example using PROC REG and interpret the output. So simple linear regression. So this model is sometimes called the ordinary least squares model. Linear regression in general can be referred to as the ordinary least squares model, whether it's simple or multiple linear regression. And we're going to talk about how it gets that term. But pretty much the goal of linear regression is to minimize the sum of squared residuals. And residuals are considered errors. So ordinary least squares, I wanna have as least amount of error in my model. So we're gonna talk about that later. It is a statistical method used to study the relationship between two continuous numeric variables. Now it's very, very important that the two variables are continuous in numeric or better yet numeric in nature. So for instance, if you have a categorical variable that you're trying to use for a linear regression, you need to one hot encode that, create dummy variables, whatever the case may be. We're gonna look at that in the future lecture, but keep in mind that the inputs into this model have to be numeric and the output also has to be numeric. For a simple linear regression, we're going to focus on one predictor or one X variable and one response variable or one Y variable. So the main difference between simple linear regression and multiple linear regression is that in simple linear regression, we're going to use one X variable, so one numeric predictor. And in multiple linear regression, you're going to have two or more predictors in your model. Okay. So let's talk about that line of best fit. And so some of you may have seen a line of best fit that's like Y equals MX plus B. So for instance, you may have seen something of this nature, MX plus B. So you'll notice that the simple linear regression model really looks just like this, okay? Where the M was some type of slope, Y and the B was the Y intercept. And the Y intercept just meant where your line crossed the Y axis. So for instance, if I had something like this, the Y intercept would be here, exactly where it crossed that Y axis, okay? So a lot of us have seen this type of equation in algebra. So we're gonna have the same thing in this simple linear regression, where we're gonna predict the Y value. The Y value could be sales, it could be height, it could be weight, it could be blood pressure, it could be BMI, what have you. So this little hat above it, or this little carrot, we call that Y hat, because we're getting some predicted Y value. And that's going to be equal to some type of Y intercept and then some type of slope based off of whatever my X could be. So my X could be something like height and the Y could be something like BMI. Okay, so that is what we're going to be working with today. How do we get some type of Y prediction based off of a Y intercept that we call beta naught or beta zero plus some slope or beta one times whatever the X predictor may be? Okay. So this is just breaking it down so that you can see. So just like we said, the definition of simple linear regression, I have one response variable or Y variable, and I have one X variable or independent variable. So this, like I said, could be something like weight, and I'm going to have weight equal to some beta naught or Y intercept plus some type of beta one slope times, let's say, the height. 
And I want to quantify the relationship between weight and height. So that is as simple as it gets. So let's see an example of this line of best fit. Okay, so in this example, we have height on the X axis and we have weight in pounds on the Y axis, okay? And so here we're working with that same equation. Instead of now A is considered the beta naught, plus B, that one is considered the beta one plus some type of X, okay? So in this case, I'm having the Y intercept where it crosses the Y axis at about 80. So my Y intercept is going to be 80, okay? And then my slope or my beta one, my coefficient is gonna be two and that's gonna be multiplied by any height. Okay, so for instance, if I have a height of 60, I'm going to draw right up to that line. Okay, and I can see that my model estimates somebody with a height of 60 has is roughly about 135 pounds. Okay, so this line of best fit is actually our model. Okay, it is our Y hat. It is our prediction. Okay, it is our prediction. So here, based off of some value of X, what do we predict Y to be? So in this case, at a height of 70 inches, I'm almost predicting someone to be about 150 pounds. Okay, so this is an example of how that line of best fit the asterisks or the stars are my actual predictions or my, I mean, my actual values. And we're going to talk about that in our last slide. Okay. So let's talk really briefly about some assumptions that we're going to talk about. So these are things that you're going to have to make sure it is intact before you run a linear regression model. So X and Y must have a linear relationship. Okay. So it can't be an exponential relationship. It can't be a quadratic relationship, it must be linear. There's going to be equal variance among my residuals. And my residuals is basically how far off am I from what actually happened in the data. It has, Y has to be normally distributed. And the observations have to be independent of each other. So independence is something that you're not going to be able to check within your data necessarily, but you can ask pretty much about the sampling technique. So what do we mean about independent observations? Is that say for instance, row one was like a husband and row two was like the wife and they both were reporting income and income was my Y. These two rows might not be independent of each other because they might re both report a shared income, okay? So basically that means whatever the subject or the row is for one row has no impact on the next row, okay? So independent observations is something that you're just going to have to ask questions about, not something that you necessarily can check, but we're gonna go over in the next lecture how to check for the top three. Okay, so those are some assumptions that need to be intact before doing a linear regression. Okay, so now we know what a simple linear regression is. So just to remind ourselves is where we have one X variable, so one predictor, and we're looking at the relationship of another predictor, one response variable. Okay, so let's look at how this syntax looks in SAS using the PROC RED procedure. So you're going to have data equals the data set name as always, and you're going to model the Y equal to the X. So for instance, that could be weight equal to height, and then you're going to run that procedure, okay? So let's look at an example. So the question, so just like any statistical test, statistical model, a model based off of statistics, what is the question that you're trying to answer? So in this case, what is the relationship between the city miles per gallon for a particular car and the highway miles per gallon? Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to go ahead and look at. So when I go into SAS Studio, you can sign up for a free SAS on demand for academics. That's what I'm utilizing. If you don't know how to sign up for this for free, please check out my first video. But pretty much I'm going to expand this libraries on the left hand side. And I'm going to go into the SAS help library, expand that. And I have a data set of cars, okay? And I have my miles per gallon city and my miles per gallon highway. And that's what I'm interested to figure out what is the relationship between these two. So I'm gonna do proc reg 
and I'm going to do data equals in the name of my data set. So it's in the SAS help library. So I'm doing SAS help dot and the name of the data table itself is called cars. And then I'm going to do this model statement and my Y is going to be on my left. So in this case, I'm going to use miles per gallon underscore city. It does not matter if you put highway or city first, but I'm just gonna say city is my Y, highway is my X in this example. And then I'm gonna run this and I'm just gonna quit out of this procedure. So now I'm gonna run this and I get some results and I get tons of graphs and some results at the top. So we're gonna talk about what these parameter estimates are when we go back into the PowerPoint, but this is gonna be my meat here. OK, because it's going to give me that slope or that beta one for my X. OK, because remember, we talked about Y equals Y hat equals some type of intercept plus some type of coefficient beta one, which you can think of as my slope times X, which in this case is highway miles per gallon. So in this case, my beta one is actually going to be this value and my beta not is going to be this intercept value there. And I see a P value of less than 0 0.0001, which means that this variable is significant and determining my relationship of miles per gallon in the city, okay, is also testing whether or not my coefficient should be equal to zero, okay? So if I have a significant p-value or a very, very small p-value, that means the coefficient should not be equal to zero. That means that the coefficient is actually significant, okay? So that's going to be something that we're going to look at to get our equation. And then we're going to also look at this lecture, that line of best fit that we see, okay? So let's go back to that PowerPoint and let's look at our results. So this was our code. We did proc reg, the name of the data set, our Y variable equal to our X variable. And we got out some parameter estimates as I already said. So I'm gonna remind you about what that equation was, right? So we get some Y prediction based off of an intercept which is my B naught or B zero plus some type of slope or coefficient, we call it beta one times whatever my X was, which was highway, right? So in this example, beta one is going to be whatever was next to my X variable, which was mile per gallon highway. And beta naught is going to be the intercept. So how do we actually interpret our X beta in this case? So the interpretation behind this is that for every one unit increase in highway miles per gallon, it will increase the city miles per gallon on average by 0 0.86 miles, okay? So as I increase the highway mile per gallon um, for a car, I can also expect the city miles per gallon to increase as well. And it's gonna be for every one unit increase, how does this X, which is highway miles per gallon, impact the Y, which is city miles per gallon on average? Okay, so that is that direct linear relationship. And that makes sense to me. If a car has a more miles per gallon on a highway, I expect it to have more miles per gallon in the city. Okay, so now that we see those different parts of our equation, we have a question, right? What would be the miles per gallon city estimate for a vehicle with 32 highway miles per gallon, right? So we can plug it into this formula above and we can get that because we have beta naught now and we have beta one. It's just these two values right here in our parameter estimates, right? So let's see what that result is on the next slide. So going back to that formula, your predicted Y, which in this case is city miles per gallon, is equal to your intercept, which in this case is negative 2.986, plus your coefficient, or some people think of it as a slope, which in this case is 0 0.859, times whatever value of X you're looking for. So in this case, I'm looking for 32 miles per gallon on the highway, so that's how I got that 32. So I'm estimating 
that a car that has 32 miles per gallon for the highway is going to have approximately 24.5 city miles per gallon. Okay, and we can kind of check this by looking at our line of best fit on the next screen. So this line of best fit, I have denoted with that little red dot on my X that this is about 32 miles per gallon. And I hit my line, because that line is my model, my prediction, and I go over and I see roughly that it is about 24.5 miles per gallon that I would estimate for a vehicle that has 32 miles per gallon on the highway, okay? So this is a nice little visual that I can see the relationship between my data. And as we learned in our Proc Core Lex lesson that is on my playlist as well, so you can go look at the Proc Core tutorial, that this is a positive relationship that as miles per gallon of the highway increases, miles per gallon with the city also increases. So I see that these two have a positive linear relationship. And then what I wanna point out here, because this is gonna segue into our future lesson, is that these dots, these data points are coming straight from my data frame and that is the actual value. So one dot, so in this case, I have a car that's right here that has about 50 miles per gallon on the highway and it has almost about 60 miles per gallon in the city, okay? But I estimated it to have almost about 35 close to 40 miles per gallon with my model because that straight line is my model. So the distance between what actually happened and what I predicted to happen is known as the residual, okay? And pretty much ideally, I wanna get my model as close to these points as possible, okay? I wanna minimize the residuals. So that is why it's called the ordinary least squares model because you want to minimize the sum of squared residuals because the smaller the residual, smaller the vertical distance is, the more accurate your estimation or prediction was, right? So I wanna minimize this vertical distance from what actually happened in my data, which is the actual data point itself, and my model, which is that actual straight line. So I wanna minimize that vertical distance, okay? So that's important to keep in mind. So let's recap and we're at an end now. Simple linear regress regression is just looking at the relationship between two numeric, numeric, numeric variables. In this case of simple linear regression, we're talking about one X variable and how that impacts one Y variable. That X variable is sometimes called your independent variable or your predictor. That Y variable is sometimes called your dependent variable or your response. The equation is very similar to y equals mx plus b, where our predicted y is going to be equal to some y-intercept plus some coefficient times the value of our x variable. In our example that we looked at, we have height on the x-axis, weight on the y-axis, and our actual prediction is denoted by this line of best fit. Okay, and we can fill in that for any value of X, what do we predict the Y to be? Okay, there are four assumptions that we're going to talk about in a future lecture that has to be intact before you use this model. You just can't use it willy nilly. And within the code, we're using proc reg, we're calling the data set, and we're using this model statement. So the keyword is model, Y is going to be on our left, X is going to be on our right. We get some outputs of our parameter estimates. Our parameter estimates is gonna give us that beta naught and beta one in our equation. And the interpretation for our beta one is gonna be in this example, for every one unit increase in highway miles per gallon, it will increase the city miles per gallon on average by 0 0.86. So there is a positive relationship that we see based off of our line of best fit as well when we plot it out. So that was an introduction to simple linear regression. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys on the next lesson. Thank you so, so, so much. Bye-bye.